Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at a Puppet Portal variant. This is probably not the most optimized variant of Puppet Portal, but it does a fairly good job and it's one that I've become fairly comfortable with. It does a nice job at dealing with everything as Puppet Portal does in the current meta. It is one of the strongest decks, if not the strongest decks in the rotation format at the moment. And I think that's mostly down to the fact that Sylvia's pings can just be so much value, along with pretty simple things like Loco, Honestly, this is a very legendary heavy deck. I mean, you do have a very, very, very m large amount of legendaries. Running triple Spinaria, triple Sylvia, triple August, and triple Loco. That makes 12 legends total, so absolutely crazy. Outside of that, though, most other things are pretty reasonable. Golds, most people have. It's very low costing golds. But the silvers and the bronzes are all very basic and simple cards. I do take a liking to Outer World Invader. Some people don't like this card, some people do. It just does a really nice job at banishing boards, which really helps out in some cases. So I will probably cover a different variant of this deck in the future. I've just got to find one that I like. And for now, this one I'm really comfortable with and seems to do really well for me. So we're going to get right into it and check it out. So our first matchup is against Haven, which in this current meta is still a very strong deck. The nerfs definitely hit it, so it definitely dropped down a bit, it's not as dominant. I think it's right where you want a deck, like Haven definitely still sticking around tier 1 is good, especially when it is more balanced out, and the win rate is a lot closer to the 50% mark. That obviously you want when you're talking about top decks. You don't want your decks to be way too dominant. I think once you break that 55% win rate mark with decks, that's when they do become fairly broken. And I'm talking consistently 55% win rates for most people. Some decks I could easily get a 60 to 70% win rate with personally, but then other people would struggle really hard. So it does come down to a lot of variation, but when you do have those consistent rates, it can be hard to deal with. But for the most part, this puppet deck does a fairly good job at ripping apart early game Haven as it can just deal with a lot of those early game threats through substitution and puppets. Really little to no issue dealing with those. Of course, we get the early Sylvia, which is always helpful. Honestly, it makes such a big difference when you have at least the one Sylvia go out. It did mean I had to use a puppet, but it was worth it for that play. Plus, most people will try and hold puppets, that's where they struggle with puppet craft. Honestly, I'm not the best puppet craft player. It takes me a long time to adjust to this kind of format of play, and honestly, it has taken a while to get used to. But once you do start to get used to puppets, you definitely start noticing things that you didn't before. I especially noticed that using puppets were a lot more beneficial than holding them, so being able to take advantage of them was something that was really, really good in the long term. And this board is pretty mind-numbing, honestly. Luckily, Loco does a really good job at at least cleaning this up a bit. And it also does give us a puppet. It does fill our hand out though, which is a little disappointing. If I had have planned it a bit better, I probably would have sacrificed a puppet, but at this point I do want to keep at least a couple of puppets for the Orcus play. Orcus, which is pretty great. So again, our opponent being a bit of a pain in the ass, honestly. We do get to clear this out very easily though. This is why I really love this card. Being able to use it to completely wipe these boards is always a good thing. Plus, you can also abuse puppets to weaken enemies, so then you can remove them fairly quickly and easily anyway. In the double globe of stairway, not too big a problem. And Mori, again, not a really big problem for us. And they are now board locked, at least currently. My guess is they're running a variant that runs some of the amulet drop cards that will allow them to free up space. Really not an issue for us, as I do go for the 4-3-5-5 play. Both will protect us and help us out. And there we go, they did decide to play that. So at this point, it's just a matter of lowering our hand so we have more puppets to play. And this is a really good way to do that. Plus it helps us stack the board a bit. Beacon of Salvation. Not what I wanted to see, but definitely not a bad one. 
This matchup is fairly interesting towards the end, I will note. Like, I would have actually lost this match if it wasn't for my opponents. I would like to say stupidity, but probably just a massive misplay on their part. And that does happen. I mean, we do fairly well here. We get a lot of damage. They don't really have anything too crucial on board that would be an issue for us right now. So I do decide to go face. Cleaning them up fairly nicely. With only four health left. Just enough for our puppet to really take it out next turn. They do end up with the Summit and the Heavenly Knight. See, right here is where they would have had me. They actually have a total of 15 damage on board currently. But then they decided to trade, which is really odd. Obviously not realizing they actually had lethal. Actually, with the Evo, they would have had even more damage. So they would have had a very easy lethal. Really great though, it means we get to see the combination card, which I rarely ever get out, so really happy about that. And Ventral Puppy Danoa is going to let us clean this up. Regardless, I could have just used a Puppet and Substitution and done the same thing, but Noah was a little bit more fun. So we would have lost that game if it hadn't have been for our opponent misplaying, but sometimes that happens, so it's still a pretty good game. And our next match is against Rune. Rune is one of those things, and I also... Sorry guys, I just realized this is actually one of my other video ones, which isn't going to be usable, so we're actually going to load up another game just a second. This was a concede game, I believe. So we'll leave that as a, just a little sneak preview for you guys. Sometimes that sort of thing happens. Those two wins are actually side by side. Because our next video will be the pre-built for Rune, which is what we'll be covering. Unfortunately, that match won't be very featured because it's not a very good one. But honestly, the pre-built for Rune is pretty interesting. It's not the best deck, that's for sure. But it's trying to do things that it probably shouldn't. But this deck does exactly what it should. It's a puppet portal deck after all, so why not? Starting off good with the Hamlin onto the Toy is always nice. Especially any Hamlin value is good. Especially in that early game, and we drew out the Spheric Blade, which is even better, being able to get that out early. So there is our nice little little soldier guy, going to go in. That nice little bit of damage we're going to get. And at this point, really just stack them up. Shining Bell Ringer. So I really wondered, what kind of shadow deck is this guy running? My guess is it's some variation on Fairy Shadow where they can just kind of go flood the board with the ghosts and then beat me down. But who knows. I thought this was a pretty nice play. We get 5 damage to face, we build up some puppets, we remove the ward. All in a very effective manner. Plus we get some really nice damage. So a second Shining Bell Ringer. Not too big a problem for us. As we can remove that fairly easily. I do decide to go down the Hamlin Evo route and hold on to my puppets for this one. Just because I've already got such a big puppet combination going off on turn 8, which honestly is going to be really good. So there's really no need not to hold them. Twilight Queen, aiming for those double last words, so Siren's Tears, this deck was super interesting which is really glad I'm able to feature it as it just really surprised me honestly. Unfortunately we're gonna burn that which, I mean, not the worst thing that happened. We still get our Spinaria play which gives us something on board which is better than zero on board. Underworld Ruler Aisha and Lady Grey Deathweaver. It's not really going to be enough to help them as they are basically dead this turn. Well, not basically. They really kind of are. Once my puppets come down, we have exactly 7 damage. And if I really had a one it, I could have got rid of the 1-1, one, one, played another puppet and had 9. So we would have had more than enough to really close that out. 
So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. This deck is quite good and like I said, it does a really nice job. Stairways is a card that has come in handy for me when I am lacking some cards. Sometimes that isn't the case though, so I don't know whether I really want it in this deck or not. I definitely will be covering another variation of this deck in the future. Probably in about a couple of weeks we'll look at another one, but we'll probably wait and see how that goes. We'll just see what's, what's really floating around at the moment. I've got so many things that I want to look at and so many decks that I've been going through just trying to decide is this deck good enough to cover or not? Is this deck fun enough to cover? Those sort of questions are usually what I ask myself when I'm picking decks and this one is actually quite nice to play so if you do enjoy this video hit the like button and subscribe you will find the deck list in the description below and I will catch you guys next time. See ya!